For today's video, I want to try and break down biological filter media in a way that's easy for beginners to understand as well as save you some money in the future. When people first get into the aquarium hobby, there is a lot to learn in a very short period of time, but one of the things I consistently see beginners getting confused about is biological filter media. In my opinion, a lot of this confusion is simply due to different brands using sneaky marketing tactics to try and make you think their media is the best when in reality it's quite overpriced for what a lot of people actually need to hold the aquarium cycle. So let's start with what biological filter media actually is. Simply put, its job is to provide surface area where beneficial microorganisms like archaea and bacteria can grow. Over time, these colonies grow until they are large enough to keep toxic ammonia and toxic nitrite levels at safe, undetectable levels in your aquarium. That's what protects your fish from these common toxins in your tank and makes sure you don't lose all of your fish within the first few weeks or months. Because the media is usually placed inside of your filter, it has a constant water flow over it 24 hours a day. This flow delivers oxygen in the water as well as various nitrogen compounds and other minerals that the microorganisms need to maintain the nitrogen cycle in your tank. If you are brand new to the aquarium hobby, I will leave links in the video description going over the nitrogen cycle in a lot more detail as well as how you can cycle your tank using the dark start method. In my opinion, beginners should really focus on the more common, easy to grow night refined microorganisms. This means you don't need to waste your money on the expensive types of filter media that are marketed as being able to remove nitrate from your tank. At the time of recording, there is very little evidence that a lot of those products actually work and even if they did, nitrate is very easy to manage with regular partial water changes or fast grown live plants. On top of that, nitrate is also far less toxic to your fish than ammonia or nitrite, so it's usually fine to have it at a slightly higher level in your tank, and mine usually maxes out at around 20 ppm on my test kit, just because of how many plants I keep. Moving on, and I want to go over some of the most common types of biological filter media, because there's quite a few of them out there. First up is 30 ppi foam, which is a type that I personally use in my filtered tanks and recommend to beginners. I have wrote a full article that I link in the description that goes into a lot more detail, but in short, it's very easy to use, it's very effective, it's easy to clean, affordable and easy to find. A lot of the premium brands don't sell it because there's just not that much profit in it compared to other biological filter media types, but that doesn't make it any less effective. Just think about sponge filters, which is easily one of the two most popular types of filter in the hobby at the time of recording. It is literally a block of foam with some airflow through it to drag water through the foam and it acts as the biological media and works perfectly fine at holding the cycle in a huge number of people's aquariums. With these 30 ppi foam sheets, you are basically doing the exact same thing, but you can cut it down to size so it fits into hang on back filters, canister filters, box filters, internal filters, and pretty much anything else you might need to put filter media into. Next up are scented glass medias like Biohome, which I used a lot in my fish room when I first got back into the hobby. As you can see in this clip, I still have a lot of this lying around, easily enough to fill some of my filters on my filtered tanks, but I still choose not to use it and go with 30 ppi foam. My main issue with it is that it's just a pain to clean when compared to foam, which you can quickly squeeze out in some old tank water within a couple of seconds and the job is done. Now, if you only have one aquarium, this really might not be an issue for you, so I can see how this might seem like it's not a big problem, but I have a fish room, I have a lot of tanks, around half of them are filtered right now, and they are using 30 ppi foams purely to save me time. That said, another advantage of foam is the price because it's far more affordable than the scented glass media products on the market right now. But credit where credit is due, I never once had a problem with scented glass biological filter media holding the cycle on my tanks ever. Then we have ceramic rings and there's a few different types of this on the market which are usually priced somewhere between foam and scented glass. 
Personally, I find these very overpriced for what they actually are, and again, they are harder to clean than foam, and in my experience, I'd say these are even harder to clean than scented glass. Now, I have only ever used this in one aquarium, but as soon as I realised how much of a pain this was to clean compared to other options, I just got rid of it and put different media in there. Another popular option is pumice stone, and full disclosure, I've never personally used pumice stone myself, but I know several people well who use it and it works perfectly fine for them and holds the cycle in their tank. Seachem Matrix is widely believed to just be overpriced pumice stone with clever marketing, but if you do want to take the pumice biological media path and you live in the United Kingdom, personally, I'd recommend you just get the Horizon Aquatics own pumice media, which is on their website, as it's essentially the same thing but costs a lot less. Again, I haven't used this myself, but it is a solid media type, so I would guess that it takes more time and effort to clean during maintenance than perform. Now there are some other biological filter media options out there, but as a beginner who's new to the hobby, you're probably going to run into one of these four. But before buying anything, I highly recommend you check the prices for the different media options in your area, and then take the time to check some independent reviews, whether it's on forums, social media, or something like Reddit. I will leave an affiliate link to the 30 ppi form that I use in the description, but that is just the last one I use. I change it almost every single time I rebuy it because for whatever reason the prices change on a regular basis, I simply go with whichever one is cheapest in my area. Now that we've covered the different types of biological filter media, I want to talk about whether or not you should combine them in your filter because I do get a few people asking me questions about this. It does seem that a lot of people seem to want to mix different types of bio media to try and get some extra advantages due to the marketing claims on the products. Personally, I see no reason at all to do this and I honestly think it's just going to be a waste of money. As I mentioned earlier, for the vast majority of people new to the hobby, the job of your biological filter media is simple. It's to provide surface area for beneficial microorganisms to colonize, which will convert toxic ammonia into toxic nitrite, and then into the far less harmful nitrate. That's it, you don't need anything else. A good example of this is my Fluval FX2 canister filter, which runs on foam. It comes with some included foam pads, which I still do use, but I replaced the ceramic media in it with some 30 ppi foam because in my experience, it's just a lot easier to clean. I guess that I've had it set up in that way for well over a year now, and I've never had a problem with my water parameters in this tank. On top of that, just topping it up with more 30 ppi foam works out far more affordable than the people that you see filling them with Seachem Matrix and stuff like that because it's just not needed, guys. If you really want to mix the different biological filter media options in your filter, then you can. I really don't think it's going to cause any negative effects, but keep in mind it will cost more money in a lot of circumstances. Now I do want to quickly touch on whether the more expensive biological filter media products on the market are actually worth the money because in all honesty I do get a few people ask me this per month now and again to be honest I just think a lot of people even more experienced people are massively overpaying for what they actually need. To answer this correctly we need to take a step back and look at what the beneficial microorganisms we want to grow on our biological media actually require. While they do require surface area to grow and that's often not the main limiting factor for the majority of tanks. That's because they also need plenty of dissolved oxygen in the water which should be readily available, but they also need a steady supply of the nitrogen compounds they need to metabolise like ammonia or nitrite. So unless you're drastically overstocking or overfeeding your tank, it's actually going to be the nitrogen compounds that limit the effectiveness of your biological filter media, not the surface area and probably not the dissolved oxygen. But to be clear, you can go out and buy these ultra high surface area biological medias if you really want, but I have seen some numbers crunched where 30 ppi form is very competitive on the actual amount of surface area provides while also being far more affordable. Now many of these ultra high surface area products also claim that they can support low oxygen bacteria like denitrifying bacteria and anamox bacteria that will reduce the nitrate levels in your tank. 
As far as I'm aware, there's no public research available at all that show these actually work when they are used in an aquarium filter. By that, I mean there is independent research out there showing that pumice has this ability when used as substrate, and lecker can have this ability when used in a specific way, but there's nothing for any of the more commercially available filter media products. On top of that, I also want to quickly touch on what that actually means for a planted tank which is correctly planted, stocked and fed, because in that situation, nitrate is literally just plant food. So, on the planted tank side of the hobby, people can go out and buy these filter media products that claim to be able to reduce nitrate in their tank, reducing the amount of plant food available, so then they've got to go out and buy a liquid fertiliser product to replenish that nitrate, which was in their tank for free. So in my opinion, I just don't see the need of these if you have a planted tank, but I can kind of see the appeal if you're keeping fish that eat plants and have a high bio load, something maybe like big goldfish, but even then, there's no evidence publicly available that these actually work. Moving on, and I want to talk about how you actually set up your biological filter media, because again, this is something where there are variables at play and some people may mix things up slightly. Now this will vary depending on your specific tank setup and what you personally want to achieve with your filter. But no matter what, I highly recommend you give your biological filter media a good rinse before you put it in your filter, even if it's 30 ppi foam because there can be little cut off pieces in there that'll come off when you rinse it. This just helps to remove dust and debris that might clog your filter or may get into the aquarium and your fish might try to eat it or something like that, and it only takes a couple of minutes. From there you want to try and think about how you want your order of filtration set up and the standard setup is mechanical filtration first to try and catch as much debris as possible. Then from there the water passes onto your biological media to have the ammonia and nitrite removed. Then from there the water passes into your chemical media which is optional and I can't stress that enough but if you're using any type of chemical filter media it'll be the last one it hits. For my mechanical filtration, I keep it very simple and very affordable, and I buy big sheets of filter floss and then cut it down to size as required when I need it. In most of my filtered tanks, I have worked out that the filter floss cutout needs to be replaced roughly every month to stop clogging, but all of that stuff that it traps is just things that are not getting through to your biological media to increase the amount of maintenance you need to do on that, so it is worth doing. After the mechanical filtration media, I put my foam, which is 30 ppi foam, as I've said multiple times, but if you're using Biohome or Matrix or something else, that's where this would go in your filter. And then finally, after that, you can add more chemical filtration, and depending on your filter, if you have enough room and you've chosen not to use chemical media, you can add more biological media, or push your biological media a little deeper into the filter and get more filter floss in there, or do whatever you want. Personally, the only chemical media I've used is Purigen to help remove tannins in some of my original tanks, but right now I'm not using any chemical media in any of my tanks. I know a fair few people in the hobby and very few of them use anything either. So again, don't fall for the marketing. You might not need any chemical filtration in your tank and the tank will still be perfectly fine. But like I said earlier, this is completely customizable and down to your needs for your tank and a good example of this is my Fluval FX2 canister filter that I mentioned earlier in the video. It has no filter floss for mechanical filtration at all and no chemical media either, it is 100% foam. And I know that might sound a little strange, but once the gunk starts to build up and you get the sticky biofilm layer, it'll catch a surprisingly large amount of the debris in your tank, provided you have a lot of it like in a canister filter. So moving on, let's go over some quick maintenance tips to help maintain your biological filter media in the best possible condition. As I've just mentioned, first and foremost, try to make sure you have mechanical filter media, even if it's just some cheap filter floss like what I use, before your bio media to catch as much debris as possible, and then you literally one for one swap that in a month to just get rid of all that debris. Another tip is to try and avoid disposable cartridges as much as possible, and I know a lot of beginners fall for these because they seem affordable on paper, but if you crunch the numbers in my area, 
one single sheet of 30 ppi foam and one single sheet of filter floss is the same price of a six month supply of those cartridges and it will last considerably longer saving a lot of money when it comes to actually cleaning my biological filter media i prefer to rinse it in old tank water so i try to time it at the same time as a water change this way i'm not exposing the microorganisms on that filter media to chlorine chloramines or anything else that might harm them and affect the biological filtration capacity of that tank that said you can rinse your biological media under tap water if you want because it can take a surprisingly long time for chlorine or chloramines to cause any serious damage personally i just don't see the need to take that risk though so i just use old tank water I do get a few people asking me if they need to replace their biological filter media so I want to quickly cover that. The type of media you're choosing, your tank's bio load and how frequently you clean your media will all play a role in this one. As I mentioned earlier, the job of your biological filter media is simply to provide surface area for beneficial microorganisms. The problem is, on certain types of this filter media, over time, gunk and debris can build up and clog this surface area and get into all of the little grooves if you don't wash it correctly. That's why I've tried to stress throughout the full video how important it is to get something you can quickly and easily clean correctly as your biological filter media. Solid media like sintered glass, ceramic rings or pumice can be harder to clean thoroughly or take more time, Again, that's one of the main reasons I just go with 30 ppi foam. But provided you can clean your biological filter media frequently enough to keep the little grooves in it visible, I really don't think there's going to be much of a need for you to replace it anytime soon. Anyway guys, that brings the video to an end. Thanks for watching, I hope it's been helpful and good luck with your biological filter media.